Nestled beneath the cooling shade and majesty of live oak trees, the Magnolia Springs Bed and Breakfast is a postcard of South Alabama. Featuring a steeply pitched roof and wraparound porch, enhanced by turned posts and balusters, the home is typical of the late Victorian style. However, the home is one of few built to this grand scale in the area. Even fewer of this style remain today, making the bed and breakfast an experience into Magnolia Springs history. In 1800, the Spanish granted the land to Joseph Collins, who operated turpentine stills in the area. During the Civil War, local stills were destroyed, and so was the economy. In 1897, Christopher McLennan purchased the land in hopes of attracting northerners fleeing the winter's wrath. By 1898, the home was complete. He, it changed hands a couple of times until 1913 when the Hardings purchased the home. Uh, they began to run it as a hotel. They ran it as a hotel through the late 40s. And by the early 20s, it was called the Sunnyside Hotel. Older members of Magnolia Springs still refer to the home as the Sunnyside Hotel. The home is typical of an early 20th century hotel, but the stories are anything but typical. Well, I've heard stories, and I, you know, when you hear things that aren't written in, in actual history books, you're, you're leery of talking about it. But uh, I, I do believe that uh, for a number of years after the 40s when it was ran as a hotel that it was used as a Sunday meeting place, uh, kind of like the town hall. Um, and also as well we've heard from a, a, an ex-sheriff of Baldwin County that uh, during Prohibition, uh, there were several raids because of gambling and drinking going on in the Great Hall. So, as I've said to myself, boy, over a hundred years, if these walls could talk, we could get some stories out of them for sure. The Magnolia Springs Bed and Breakfast has also been referred to as the Governor's Mansion South. Legend has it that public officials use the home as a place to cut deals away from the influences of the capital city. When official business took place in Montgomery, the deals had already been sealed. Uh, after the 40s, when both the Hardings passed away, Mrs. Harding's sister, Mrs. Cowan, uh, inherited the home. Her and Mr. Cowan basically did not run it as a hotel, but kept it a private residence, and it continued that until, or, or through several hands until 1980, when uh, Rita and Don McNair, they purchased the home and really did serious renovation to the home at that time. Uh, restoring the front porch, which w had been gone at some point during the time. Uh, they did a lot of uh, interior work as far as putting more beadboard uh, in the back entryway. They extended the uh, deck out or the den out about eight feet. Uh, they added the stained glass that you've seen at that time, and they did a lot of work. Uh, they lived in it about 17 years. The McNairs had planned to turn the historic home into a bed and breakfast. But when their children moved away and their local antique business became more successful, the McNairs felt the home was too much for two people. The home went up for sale in 1993 and was on the market for three years. I'm from Gadsden, Alabama, and have been down here minimal four or five times a year since I was a child. And so I was pretty familiar with the area. Uh, past couple of years I had been doing some research on the bed and breakfast industry and uh, knew I wanted to live in this part of the county. So I started driving around and when I saw the home, that's all there was to it. After three months of renovation, the Magnolia Springs Bed and Breakfast opened on March 14, 1997 to a full house. I think the, the, the nicest part of this home uh, would have to be the Great Hall. Um, as, as Rita McNair told me when I was looking at the home, if you can't sit and be content in that room, you've got a problem. Fourteen and a half foot ceilings grace the open den area. The walls and ceilings feature heart pine beaded boards, giving the room an established yet relaxing feel. The room's window trim and baseboards feature a magnificent and rare curly pine. All woodwork is original to the home. In the den area, guests may also admire a purse crafted by Mrs. Cowan, a one-time owner of the home. The purse is made solely from pine straw. Mrs. Cowan created these purses in part to help support herself. The McLennan room is the most prominent and the only bedroom downstairs. The 
The bedroom bath holds a beautiful antique claw foot tub and an elephant trunk toilet that often attracts attention from most guests. Folks that have done a lot of travels in Europe recognize it immediately because evidently it's more prevalent over there. Uh, and I guess that's because we consider 100 years old over here, whereas, you know, to them, two and 300 years old uh, might be fairly old. Uh, and that's about the age of the toilet is about 200 years old. The bed and breakfast features four bedrooms upstairs, each with their own private bath. My claim to fame on breakfast seems to be a breakfast pizza. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why that's such a big hit. Basically, well, yeah, I do know why. It starts with a crescent roll crust uh, with sausage, egg, and cheese. And of those items, what's not to like? You know, and then we throw a little hash brown in there, too. Um, so that's saying, and it's something different. When people stay at a bed and breakfast, they want something out of the ordinary, or, or you, you tend to expect something out of the ordinary. After breakfast, Guests enjoy walking a short distance to the Magnolia River, where guests may witness the only year-round mail delivered by boat in the United States. When you see the canopy oak-lined streets of Magnolia Springs, you feel you've come home. You feel as if they were waiting just for you and waiting to wrap their arms around you. I call Magnolia Springs a little enchanted land. Uh, I've told my family and friends that I moved to a place better than uh, Mayberry. Uh, the neighbors here have such a good community uh, uh, aspect uh, to themselves and I think because in Magnolia Springs nobody is, is transferred to Magnolia Springs, you know, it's not a large mecca. Uh, people live here because they want to live here and that makes for a very nice group of folks. Uh, we have them guests when they'll take their morning walks, they'll come back and say, David, you have the nicest neighbors, which tells me that my neighbors, that even they don't know these people, if they're walking down the street, they'll speak to them, and that's the kind of place we have here. 